Yeah, you referenced the work of the Yakima tribe. I was just curious if you could elaborate a bit on what they're doing with the river environments and, and where their work is and, and what, their, what the impact of that is. Um, they've done a, a bunch of uh, small structures like that on Beaver Creek and then um, between Twisp and Winthrop, they just got done with this big 1890 side channel that starts just up the road here where they uh, they re-excavated a historic Menhow River channel and fed it with a groundwater fed um, infiltration gallery, like put a bunch of pipes under the water, under the ground to collect the groundwater and then express that into the side channel. So they've done that. And they're doing a lot of um, wood structures on the main stem of the twist and, and they've done some on the main stem of the Menhow. Um, and then done a lot up in the Chiwuk of wood structures. So yeah, that kind of stuff. There's any more? If you want to know more about what they're doing, you could get a hold of Hans Smith. They have their office um, in Winthrop on the, on the, behind the library. Yeah, so that was the avalanche that yeah. happened. Yeah, and I never got up to see that last year. Um, yeah, they do spawn up there, bull trout, for sure. That's really nice habitat for them. It's kind of the nor far range of um, Spring Chinook. Um, and yeah, it's added a lot of wood and complexity and all of that stuff that I've been talking about. So I'd imagine that they'll respond well to it. Um, I'd, and I'd imagine it could make the river, you know, move around that and uh, put a bend in the river right there. So I'll have to get up and look at it this year. It sounds like it was really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. so crazy. <laughs> so I just don't really know. I think normally that we'd be mainly worried about those hydrophobic soils and those summer intense rainstorms. That's been my experience that when most stuff happens. But we did have that one big landslide off of Periton Peak that was super saturated yeah. soils. And we had the same thing happen also with that same storm event on War Creek. And I don't think the War Creek one was fire related. But, um, so, who knows, I mean, after this last year, I'd just say anything could happen. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> Hi, Dick. Hi. So, as far as your general conclusion might be, what would you say the effect of FAR now is on our habitat conditions? Uh, mostly negative, neutral, or positive? Well, you know, I guess I'm kind of an optimist about this. I, I think it's it's positive, um, but Beaver Creek and Fraser Creek are really modified. They're, the fires, and I'm basing that on my past experience, which is in the upper Menhow, upper Chihuahua Lake Creek, where there's not a lot going on and it's really natural and there's no culverts and there's no highways sitting on top of things and the beavers are allowed to go nuts there and everything. And, so down where people live, I guess I'm, um, maybe I'm neutral. And then certainly the main stem of the Methow, 
I mean, the amount of sediment delivered to the main stem, it was just buried. I don't know if, how many of you got out on the river um, in October, but it was like sand dunes in the main river. And wow. um, I'd like to hope that those would clean up fairly quickly, but, you know, the fire was so extensive, it's kind of a new, <laughs> new thing. But then I have to think about, you know, um, Mount St. Helens. This doesn't come anywhere close to something like a volcano going off. But if we start having these big fires every few years, that's not, that's almost worse because it becomes chronic as opposed to episodic. So I don't, I don't know if I answered your question, but I guess I don't. <laughs> I mean, there could have been, there, there probably were some juvenile <coughs> spring chinook that were down in the main stem and got killed by the mud. But there were, but they, a lot of them would have been up far, up high. And it, it's kind of one of the reasons, like, you know, kind of back to your question about the work the Yakimas are doing and building these um, off channel habitats and log jams and things is to try and provide as many refugia types, type of habitat and reconnect spring-fed um, side channels that are off the main channel in as many places as possible so that you're kind of putting that piece back so that at least they have somewhere to go if they can get there, if it's connected. So, um, yeah, in Beaver Creek, there was no, there's not really much of that at all anymore. And the lower Mehau is pretty, it's naturally a very confined and, and doesn't have, you know, those big connected floodplains like the upper Met House. So I'd imagine that a lot of those spring chinook are probably going to stay up here where the habitat is. But there are probably some down there that died. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, were the cocoa affected in any way differently than the others? Or? They would have been like the um, summer chinook. Of, so the coho are reestablishing themselves and normally they like to spawn in off-channel habitats, um, beaver pond, you know, close to beaver ponds and things like that, smaller streams and um, so some of them could have been in Beaver Creek and would have been, that would have been good. <laughs> and the ones that, some of them are spawning and establishing in the main stem of the Medhow, that in the reach that was affected by the fire, so they probably um, were not successful, but then a lot of them moved upstream above that, and most of the spawning is above that, so they were okay. John? Jenny, you know, you were mentioning about the sediment that was deposited in the main stem of the Methow. Do you suppose there's going to be a lot of cottonwood recruitment, reestablishment from that event? Yeah, that's a great question. We were talking about that the other day looking at our place on Beaver Creek where we had a lot of really beautiful old cottonwoods mm -hmm. that um, they're all dead now and we were kind of going like, well, where are our cottonwoods going to come from? How are they going to reestablish? And we're thinking, well, some of them are going to sprout up and some of them, um, the seeds will get carried by the water and will deposit on the, on the mud flats mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the seeds are airborne. Right. And so they have lots of strategies mm -hmm. to recolonize, but I, I bet those mud flats are, are really going to see a lot of cottonwood action. Um, and hopefully there's enough of the mud flats that are out in the annual floodplain right. so that they can get going. And then the other thing right now, what we're, <coughs> the other concern is um, non-native plants coming in like tansy, Weed canary grass. <laughs> There's so, but along the main stem of the Methow, you know that low flow channel is so low, and the high flow, it might, 
it's just a lot drier and harsher environment, so yeah. those weeds might not do as well, and hopefully the cottonwoods take over. In other places, like where we've done some of our restoration work, where we've disturbed the ground, and then the river has deposited sand, you know, a year later we've got an ocean of little cottonwoods coming in, so yeah, we could see a lot. It could be really good for cottonwoods. certainly there's a lot of dilution <laughs> um, but you know the scale of it you know the amount of water and material relative to how much got washed in I mean it's not a good thing by any means so but if there's a long-lasting to look at the shape of the land where you are and, and, and ask yourself the question, how did, how did that shape arise? Where did that come from? How did, wh why is that sand, you know, why is it all thinned out? Why, why are all those little gullies <laughs> there? And, uh, you know, um, and I always thought that those things happen when the glaciers happened and when the dinosaurs were walking around. And now I know from these events that no, they happen right now really fast and they're, they're very modern. Big giant boulders and um, big fans and uh, it, it, it can happen literally like we saw overnight. But that's a good, especially once land, when it's burnt off it's really easy. But you can still see it when it's forested if you look carefully. You can look and you can see the drainage patterns underneath the forest and, and just ask yourself the question of how did that happen? How old are those rocks? Are they covered with moss? Are they covered with soil? Did, you know, maybe they only happened 50 years ago. Maybe they're gonna, it's gonna come back to life with the next fire. And I think there's a lot of places up the Twist River like that. A lot of tributary junctions up the Twist River. So, yeah. Great, well thank you so much. Thank you.